Other great engines which trace the history of our railways. From this working replica of the first steam loco, Stevenson's rocket, to the prototype of today's high-speed trains, the National Railway Museum traces over 150 years of railway history. But all the engines in the collection are on the move because the museum desperately needs a new roof. Shunting all the locos and carriages out of the museum is a major operation involving a great deal of careful planning, as chief engineer Richard Gibbon explained. About 40 locos have to be moved amongst 200 total items of stock that have got to change place. Quite a job then. Yes, it certainly is. What are you planning to do with the roof? The roof's going to be completely replaced. There are seven individual sections at the moment which are going to be replaced with one very large roof. What about the locos when you've got them outside? You've moved them. Where are you going to move them to? Well, they're going... Some of the locomotives are going into store. Some of the locomotives are taking part in the Great Railway Show over the road. And a large proportion of the locomotives and the stock are moving to Swindon to take part in the National Railway Museum on Tour exhibition, which is to open on April the 10th. The Mallard. She's awesome. How are we going to move her? Well, we're going to do the same as we've done with all the other steam locomotives. We've got to make sure, first of all, that it's well oiled and prepared underneath. <laughs> A real mechanics nightmare. One thing I noticed is the mallard shape, very aerodynamic, but that yes. wasn't used in later models. Why was that? Because it was very difficult to service and to maintain. All these working parts were hidden by the streamlining. And they couldn't was, get up and underneath. That's right, so it was found to be difficult to work them. But the same shape is repeated with the modern electric and diesel locomotives that are running on BR now, the, the same slanting nose. Where does the preparation start, Richard? Well, the preparation starts here with you putting that on first. Right. And then following me down this hole down, under the engine. Down there? Yep. I'll never fit down there. Follow me. <laughs> I'll follow you then. Under these front wheels here. And you'll see there's a bit more space at the back here under the main driving wheels which is where we're going to be working. John here is already getting things ready for us. You'll see this is the axle that we're going to lubricate. Was it not a mechanical device invented to stop the, the driver having to do this all the time? Well, the only way the driver really knows that each bearing has taken some oil and is correctly lubricated is to do it this way. Meanwhile, outside the building, another historic locomotive named City of Truro was being steamed up for a boiler test. Not all the locos were leaving the museum under their own steam. Most had to be shunted out in long trains behind the diesel. With the way now clear, it was time to shunt the mallard out onto the turntable. Slowly, and with the greatest care, local 4468, the mallard, was pulled out onto the turntable. Simple. Well, yes, it is. How much does it weigh, the mallard? It weighs 130 tonnes in working order. That's... And you can, you can see that we're actually overhanging the ends. It's a 70-foot turntable, which is the biggest that the railway's had. And this locomotive is 72 foot six, so it's overhanging the ends. It's just the very biggest we can go to. It's, the, it's as big as it can be, long as it can be, it's as high as it can be, and as fat as it can be. Mallard is absolutely the, the limit of the envelope which the railways were provided with to work in. The following day, Mallard was on the move again. The next stage of the operation is in the hands of British Rail. They're going to move the Mallard out of the museum and onto the main British Rail intercity lines, move the Mallard over 500 yards and into the new museum. The last time Mallard ventured out onto these lines was in 1988, when she was in full steam to mark the 50th anniversary of her record-breaking journey. This was the incredible sight as she raced along the East Coast Main Line. To 
Today, Mallard is traveling at a slower pace, pushed by a diesel shunter, because she will need some work on her boiler before she can be put back into steam again. Mallard's temporary home is a covered siding alongside the new exhibition, the Great Railway Show, a few hundred meters along the line. Inside a converted goods shed, the new exhibition recreates all the sights and sounds of a railway station in the days of steam. Some of the locos, trucks and carriages from the museum's collection have been put on display for the first time in the Great Railway Show. Well, British Rail have done their bit, the Mallard and this great Western workhorse are just about ready to go into their final place in the museum. To move it there, I've got a load of this steam engine to put it in its final place. Right, lads, are we ready? Yes, here we go. Yeah, let's move it. How could the drivers see when there's all this steam about? Great difficulty. That's why express engines have the wind deflators at the front to bring the smoke and steam up clear of the driver's face. What's the plan for the Mallard over the next couple of years? It's going to go down to Swindon in four or five weeks' time. It'll stay there for the rest of the year and then it'll come back up when we've got the new roof on the building, back to its rightful home at York. We're just about to bring the Mallard into the tent. Has it gone relatively smoothly for you? Yes, it has. It's gone exactly as we planned it. Richard and his team are making sure that Mallard is well looked after. She's a priceless monument to the age of steam. With this kind of care, Richard hopes that the world's fastest steam locomotive will still be able to steam along in all her glory in the 21st century.